That award for the smallest heart in the world goes to a fairy fly. It's a little insect that's about as thick as a piece of paper. You'll need a microscope to see its heart. Despite the name, this creature isn't a fly. The fairy fly is actually a wasp. If you ever get a chance to look at one under a microscope, you'll see the resemblance. Moving over to bigger but equally impressive hearts from the animal kingdom. Zebrafish have a very cool ability when it comes to their tickers, which are only about 0.04 inches in diameter. Their hearts can regenerate. If a zebrafish's heart ever gets damaged or has a problem, most of the time it can repair itself. Human hearts may be awesome since they continuously try to replace their cells and repair heart tissue, but it's no match for that of the zebrafish. Let's look at cockroaches. Our hearts have four chambers, each of them with a designated task. The system can't function without all four working properly. The heart of a cockroach has 12 to 13 chambers, which are placed in a row along the length of the insect's body, on average about 1.5 inches. They work separately since they're powered by different muscles. This means that if any of those chambers gets affected, the insect might not even notice. Most of the time, the cockroaches survive without all those heart chambers working properly. A hummingbird's heart can beat up to 1,200 times per minute. The heart of a human athlete might only go as fast as 220 beats per minute. Despite being one of the smallest hearts in the world, that of a hummingbird is quite large compared to the bird's full size. It amounts to about 2.5% of its total body weight. By the way, the blue-throated hummingbird flaps its wings up to 15 times each second. It's so fast that this movement cannot be perceived by the human eye. That impressive speed is backed up by an even faster heart, which beats up to 21 times each second. Ever heard of the emperor penguin? It's not a penguin species that just happens to have a crown on its head, if that's what you're thinking. They are fascinating swimmers that can dive deeper than any other bird, up to 700 feet. Not to mention that they can stay submerged for up to 18 minutes at a time as they gather food. Their hearts are equally as spectacular, weighing somewhere around 5 ounces. Their hearts are very slow. When in the water, an emperor penguin can reduce its heart rate to about 15 beats per minute. It shuts down the blood supply to all but the most vital organs. It also dials down oxygen consumption, allowing the animal to use only what's necessary for deep water hunting. Heart size tends to be pretty proportional throughout the animal kingdom. Most of these organs weigh somewhere around 0.6% of an animal's body mass. Dogs and wolves have bigger hearts by comparison, about 0.8% of the animal's total weight. An average dog's heart weighs about 20 ounces. If a human heart suddenly got filled with fat, it would become a problem pretty fast. But that's very different for a python, though. If that happens to this reptile, it's actually a sign that things are going great. Pythons tend to have really big meals. After each of such meals, their hearts get larger by about 40%. And since a python can weigh as much as 250 pounds, that's a lot. Most of these increases is caused by the snake's heart swelling up because of fatty acids absorbed from the meal. These reptiles adapted to do so to speed up their digestion, even though it still takes them days to process one single meal. Their blood gets so full of fatty acids, it even changes its color and consistency. In some cases, it may even turn opaque, looking more like milk than anything else. Finishing our chart on the other side of the spectrum, the largest heart in the animal kingdom belongs to the blue whale. And for a good reason, since they're some of the largest animals ever. This giant heart is about as big as a bathtub and weighs more than the average gorilla. Regardless of their size, 
animal hearts are amazing. Us humans and most animals just have one heart, but this rule doesn't apply to all creatures. Take octopuses or squids, which have three hearts. This is how their system works. Two of their hearts help to pump blood to the gills, so they have enough oxygen in their bodies. The third heart pumps blood around the body. Some animals don't have hearts altogether. It doesn't necessarily make them mean, though. Jellyfish, starfish, or corals lead pretty good lives even without hearts. Take starfish, for example. They don't even have blood. That's probably the reason why they don't need a heart either. No list is complete without some amazing facts about the human heart. You don't need to Google it or look for an anatomy book to know how big your heart is. Just squeeze your fingers and make a fist. That's about as large as the heart gets in adults. This amazing organ is responsible for keeping everything active in our bodies. It can beat about 115,000 times every day. Ever watched a cartoon in which the main character's heart just starts pumping out of its chest? Most of the time, we're tricked into thinking that the sound our heart makes is produced when this organ touches the tissue surrounding it when beating. Turns out that this sound is actually made by the opening and closing of the heart valves. They're like small doors inside our hearts that ensure that blood flows correctly from one side of the heart to the other. For our bodies to work, blood needs to move at the right time and in the right direction. Our lungs are not twins, they're siblings, and our heart is the reason. Our right lung is bigger and tends to weigh more, and our heart is to blame. Our ticker tilts to the left a bit. This creates a small indentation in our left lung, which is called the cardiac impression. The right lung may be bigger, but it's a bit shorter since it needs to make room for the liver. Speaking of positioning, our heart is really not as far on the left as we might think. It's actually pretty centered with just a slight tilt to the left. People born with dextrocardia, though, have their hearts positioned on the right side of their chest. This condition, on its own, isn't problematic, but it tends to coincide with other diseases that can have serious effects on the heart and other organs. Do you know most heart attacks happen on Mondays? The reason is still up for debate, but most scientists believe it has to do with the stress of starting a new working week or with the changes in our sleep-wake cycle. You tend to sleep more at the weekend, and waking up earlier on Monday may be detrimental to your heart. Your heart started beating about four weeks after you were conceived, and it won't stop until you pass away. Sure, it may get weaker as you grow older, but the heart doesn't get tired. It's a really hard job if you think about it. Try this experiment to test it out. Squeeze a tennis ball in your hand. Your beating heart is about the same force, 100,000 times a day. I bet you'll lose count before finishing. In some cases, the energy our hearts need to carry on pumping is unstable. That's why pacemakers were invented. They act like small generators placed inside the human body. They help with stabilizing abnormal heart rhythms. The first ever device of this kind was put into a woman's body back in 1958. Her name was Arna Larson, and when she passed away at 86, it was because of other issues. It had nothing to do with her heart. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.